Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Shilpa Singh. I am a postgraduate in Forensic Medicine from Armed Forces Medical College, Pune. Today the topic that we will be talking about is Mechanical Injuries. So diving right ahead into the topic, let's start first with abrasion. Now what is abrasion? Abrasion is basically just a superficial denudation of the skin or the mucous membrane. It is a two-dimensional injury. What I mean by a 2D injury is that it only has length and breadth. It does not have a depth. It is a two-dimensional injury. Only the superficial denudation of the skin is taking place. Uh, there are various types of abrasion which we will discuss once it comes across. Number one is scratch or linear abrasion. Very simple to understand. It happens with any of the pointed objects with a small surface like a needle, a thorn. Uh, gray sliding, scrape or grinding, these are various terminologies for the same type of abrasion where the same type of force is causing uh, this type of abrasion. Uh, most commonly encountered in road traffic accidents where there is dragging on a broad rough surface. So that causes a graze, a sliding, a scrape or a grinding abrasion. Moving ahead, a pressure abrasion or a crushing friction force abrasion is one that is generally found in questions in uh, cases of ligature mark in hanging or strangulation where there is pressure or there is crushing of the underlying tissues. Imprint abrasion also known as impact abrasion, contact or patent. There is a slight difference between impact and contact, we will uh, discuss it in the upcoming slides but for now any imprint abrasion is one which can be caused by a printed rough object like a radiator grill, a headlamp rim, a teeth and bite marks. They are also known as imprint abrasions. Now the mechanism of abrasion decides the type of abrasion. What happens is if there is a tangential force, it can cause a linear abrasion or a graze abrasion like we discussed. Grazed abrasion most commonly encountered in road traffic accidents, linear ones whether with a needle, with a thorn. These were the ones that we have discussed. It can be a pointed object with a small surface. Compression force. Now this can cause a patent as well as a non-patent impression. In patent we have discussed about impact or contact like radiator grills, headlamps, uh, rims of a motor vehicle and also teeth or bite marks. Now these are a few photographs to depict an abrasion correctly. Like we discussed, it's a two-dimensional injury where there is only length and breadth and no depth to the injury. Gravel rash, road rash or brush burns like we discussed, there is heaping of tissue at one end. It is because of a coming in contact with a rough and a broad surface. So graze abrasion or brush burn, we have discussed grinding, sliding or brush burns. Why do we call it brush burns? We will discuss again. Most common type as we have said earlier, it is because of the road traffic accident. Now the question that I was talking about, why are we calling it brush burns? Basically it mimics an injury of burn. It occurs when the skin is rubbed or there is some friction against a rough surface that commonly happens in road traffic accidents. Uneven longitudinal parallel lines of abrasion are seen. If I can go back to the previous slide, this is what I would. It is uneven parallel longitudinal lines. Epithelium is heaped up at the end of these lines which indicates the direction of force. Now this is important for medical legal importance that the heaping of tissue at one end of the injury, it indicates the force from where which the uh, pressure has been applied. Suppose there is heaping of here tissues, this is the injury, so the force is here. This is how the injury must have taken place. Pressure, also known as crushing abrasion or because of friction. Over here we can see this is a uh, picture in which sustained pressure of a rough object or it could be at 90 degrees has caused the crushing of the superficial layers of the skin and hence there is an abrasion present. Uh, there is no force on impact but because of the sustained pressure after the object comes in contact with the body surface. So basically there has been no force that has been directly applied to this injury. What has happened because of sustained pressure at 90 degree, a pressure or a crushing abrasion has uh, occurred. Timing of abrasion, now this is a most commonly asked question, what is the timing of abrasion and what do we mean by timing of abrasion? Uh, basically, abrasion is an injury which will heal very rapidly, it causes minimum bleeding and it generally heals in a less than a week with no permanent disfiguration, no permanent scap formation. So that is the quality of an abrasive injury. 
but this for a scab formation might not be permanent still it indicates the time duration or the time interval since the injury has taken place this is of medical legal importance to correlate the time of hurt to the uh, timing of abrasion so if it is bright red without scab definitely it's a fresh injury there is always minimal bleeding in abrasion it doesn't bleed much reddish scab is present it can be somewhere around 12 to 24 hours like half a day to one day if there is a reddish brown scab present, the injury timing indicates the time interval is of 2 to 3 days. A dark brown scab is generally 4 to 5 days. Brownish scab is 5 to 7 days. The scab has fallen off and there is a denuded or a depigmented area lying underneath. So, it is 7 to 10 days. That is the time interval since the injury has taken place. This table is important for a variety of reasons that we need to mug up these points. It can be asked that when is the uh, the question that can be most commonly asked is when is the scab uh, reddish brown uh, after how many days of injury or if the scab has fallen off and the underlying depigmented area is being seen then please tell us the time interval of the injury that must have occurred. So, these can be various questions on the timing of abrasion. It's a very simple table to learn also. Now the medical legal importance of vibration, why do we need to know? Like we discussed direction of injury based on the heaping of tissues. Wherever the injury direction will take place, there will be heaping of tissues with underlying denuded or underlying area which is comparatively lighter in color because of the denudation of the skin. So the direction of injury, the most common one, the most asked one. Causative weapon. Yes, like we discussed, if there is a pattern to it, we can always talk about the causative weapon like in a radiator grill, a headlight rim, teeth and bite marks. There is a pattern to it, so the offending weapon can be correlated to it. Time since injury, that table that we discussed just a slide back, that will tell us the time interval of injury. Place of occurrence. This can also be very important especially in road traffic accidents it can the abrasive injury might have a little bits of particles of dirt gravel or glass particles attached to it so that can also give a clue as to the place of occurrence of that particular injury in road traffic accidents most commonly doesn't rule out all the other aspects but most commonly in road traffic accidents moving ahead artifacts and abrasion this question has been asked a lot what are post-mortem artifacts we'll come to a completely separate topic known as post-mortem artifacts but right now we are only talking about the artifacts and abrasion what do these artifacts lead us to believe basically if something is mimicking an abrasion injury or an abrasion that will cause a misdiagnosis or a subjective error in a case of medical legal importance. So, we need to know the difference between the artifacts that are produced by ants, by insects, by animals, by marine animals, by excoriation of skin due to excreta or bed sores. These will look very different or they might look a little similar to an abrasion injury and hence cause us to believe that it is a true abrasion where it is not so. So, we need to keep our eyes open for any artifacts in diagnosing an abrasion injury. Antimortem versus postmortem abrasion. Uh, most commonly, antimortem abrasions can be located anywhere on the body. It can be because of the fall, it can be because of other reasons. But postmortem abrasions are generally on bony prominences when the body is being dragged or the body is being uh, changed into positions or uh, something of that sort. The color of healing will depend on the stage of healing. It can be bright red, it can be reddish, then it can be reddish brown, then it can be brown and then it can be a scab with a denuded skin. So, it can indicate the stage of healing. But it is always, this is the question, it is yellow, translucent and parchmentized in a case of postmortem abrasion. There is no redness attached to it, there is no uh, healing process to it. Exudate, obviously there will be more exudate because it's a life process. Vital reaction will be present, scab formation will be present and all these three will be absent in a case of postmortem artifact. It is because generally because of the handling of body post death. 
generally which causes a postmortem abrasion. So it is very easy to differentiate between antemortem as well as a postmortem abrasion. So moving ahead with contusion, uh, what happens in contusion is it is also known by the name of bruise. They can be extravasation of blood in the subcutaneous or the submucous tissue due to the rupture of capillaries. Uh, there is no breach in continuity of the covering skin. So what was happening in abrasion was the covering skin was being dragged or it was being denuded or the, the epithelium or was being heaped up at one end of the injury. But in a bruise, in a contusion, there is no breach in the continuity of the covering skin. There is only extravasation. This is the covering skin. There is extravasation of blood uh, in the subcutaneous or in the submucous tissue due to the rupture of capillaries. So various capillaries have ruptured. This skin integrity is present and this has caused a contusion or a bruise. The factors, there can be many factors which modify the appearance of a bruise. The site of injury, it might, two different sites in the body may give an appearance that there are different types of contusion while it might have been because of the same weapon at the exact same time to the same person but different parts of the body. Vascularity of the part, yes, because it is of the underlying reason is rupture of capillaries which leads to bruising. So, definitely if the vascularity of that particular body part is high, we will have a lot of bleeding under the skin. Age, older and infants at both the spectrums of age, that is children and old people. At both the ends of the spectrum, contusion or bruising is more common. In children, we can assume because the skin and the epithelium is very soft and old people because of the laxity of the skin. Sex, it generally uh, females bruise easier than males, it is said so. Color of the skin, uh, white skinned, I am sorry to use that term but it is what it is. A white skinned or a lighter skin, to be more honest, a lighter skinned individual will uh, show a bruise more appropriately as compared to a person of a darker color. Some natural diseases, especially liver diseases, in which bruising is very common. So it also indicates some kind of an underlying disease. So these are the various factors that modify or that alter the appearance of a bruise. A patent or a different types of bruising, most common a patent bruise. This is basically an intradermal bruise where the weapon sinks into the skin with little or no damage to blood vessels over the ridges. I will explain it well with a diagram. The traction that causes marginal blood vessel to rupture in the skin forced into the grooves. So bleeding is into the skin is minimal and hence there is no or little damage to blood vessels over the ridges. How does this happen? For example, in cases of spherical objects, in cases with balls, if the injury has taken place. So, a ball that will hit a surface of the skin like this, it will cause a depression like this and this will lead to the ball being in contact with the skin. So, over here and over here, we will have a spherical or a donut kind of a bruise. Tram line type railway track, again, if the rod is like this and it hits a surface, so there will be parallel road or it will be a parallel track which will look like an appearance like this. Because the rod is hit here, so it is causing a groove into the skin and the overlying ridges are the ones from which capillary or minimal capillary bleeding is taking place and hence the area in between is devoid or looks as if there is no uh, contusion to it. In uh, tire tracks that can be easily made out, there is a patterned a bruise like this. The pattern of the causative or the offending weapon like a tire can be completely made out. This is because of a rod or a spherical object. So the healing of contusion, like we talked about the age of abrasion, we will be talking about the healing of contusion. Basically it depends on the hemoglobin component. Uh, what happens is the color of contusion follows a 
pattern on the almost similar to like this R B D G Y. So red. Red is because of the hemoglobin. It is generally fresh. It happens in a few within less than one to two hours. Fresh to one to two hours. Blue color is because of the reduced hemoglobin in that injury. This happens in couple of hours to almost twenty a day. Brown or black is because of the formation of hemosiderin. There it happens in two to three days. Green is hematoidin, five to seven days. Yellow. Now this component is sometimes missed, and generally from green to the color normal color of the normal skill also takes place. Yellow is because of bilirubin. It takes seven to ten days. I will take a moment and try to revise it over here. That an abrasion injury was healing within seven to ten days. With minimal, it had minimal bleeding with no permanent scab formation. But in a contusion, the yellow color of the skin comes in seven to ten days, and it still takes around two weeks to be normal, the normal skin. That is, one to two weeks. Like I've shown, hemoglobin gets converted into bilirubin, gets converted into bilirubin. So this is the pattern it forms. It is reddish, bluish, purple, green, and then yellow and normal skin. So this is how it is. It is a fresh injury. This is twenty-four hours approximately, and hence two to three days, five to six days, seven to ten days, and around ten to fifteen days. That is normal. It is still not normal. Some amount of uh, Injury can component can still be made out, but more or less we can assume that yes, it was normal. We'll be talking about migratory bruise over here. Ah, uh, it's basically relatively distant to the site of impact. Migratory is migration to move from one place to the other. So the injury is at site A, and we are able to appreciate the bruise at site B. This is known as a migratory bruise. Now, what? Why does this happen? Because of the seepage of blood prevented from reaching the surface due to the facial plane arrangements. The original site of injury can be the fracture of floor of the anterior cranial fossa. Suppose there is a fracture in the anterior cranial fossa, will we see the bruise? Bruising around the eyes, also known as black eye or spectacle hematoma. Fracture of the floor of the middle cranial fossa. This is an important table for MCQ point of view. Fracture of the floor of the middle cranial fossa. The bruising of mastoid or battle sign. Mastoid over the years. Fracture of the jaw. Bruising in the neck. Fracture of pelvis. Bruising over the thigh. Fracture of femur causes bruising over the lower thigh or above the knee. Then calf injury leads to bruise in the ankle. The blood is being seeped down into the ankle. So if there is an injury at site A and the bruise is uh, found at site B, this is known as a migratory bruise. There can be fracture of anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, which might be probable questions, and definitely these all which you can use your brains and try to answer. Battle sign. So this is a typical battle sign behind the ear where we can see a bruise. Uh, battle sign was named after William Henry Battle. Just a trivia. Bruising is visible behind and below the ear at the mastoid process caused by the gravitational component accumulation of the blood from a basilar skull fracture. So this can be a question. What is battle sign? Where is it seen? Is it a migratory or an ectopic bruise or not? Moving ahead, a black eye or a spectacle hematoma we discussed because of the fracture of the floor of the anterior cranial fossa. It can be also known as raccoon or panda eyes, uh, spectacle hematoma or black eye. An injury to the front of the scalp and thus draining. There can be three reasons. Three reasons because of which we can see a black eye or a spectacle hematoma. Number one, we've discussed fracture of the skull, thus draining blood from the orbital roof. Injury to the front of the scalp and thus draining the blood down over the supraorbital area and direct blow into the orbit. So these can be three types of injuries which can cause a black eye or a spectacle hematoma. It is not necessarily an anterior cranial fossa. Delayed bruising. So we've talked about pattern. We talked about migratory. Now we're coming down to delayed bruising. It is internal bruising of tissues which take times to be visible externally. There is nothing rocket science about it. The injury has taken place. But to come to the surface to be visible externally, it is taking time. So injury could have taken place on day one, and we are able to appreciate it on day three maybe. So this is known as delayed bruising. Second examination after forty-eight hours. This is the key. 
If you are suspecting a delayed bruise, if the history is such that the bruise is not visible, we should always tell the patient to report after 48 hours so that a re-examination can be taken place. We will be talking about medical legal aspects of bruise now. Identification of the causative object, yes we can do it if it is a patent bruise like we told a donut injury, a tram truck line injury and all those things a pattern is there. So yes, the weapon can be correlated to the injury. Time since injury, because of that graph of healing, the color changes, we can talk about it. Uh, we were saying that yes, we can, the color yellow was something that was not taking place, that was not coming in between all the color changes progression. True. Also in some cases, uh, like in subconjunctival hemorrhage, in meningeal hemorrhages, please remember these two. In subconjunctival and meningeal hemorrhages, because of the hemoglobin content, the uh, color progression is generally not followed. So, even though it is a uh, bruise, even though there are hemorrhages, we will not, may, we might not see a colored progression or time since injury correlating to the day that has been talked about. Uh, differentiating from artificial bruise caused by a marking nut, when we will be talking about semicarpus anacardium, it causes a false bruise. They can be other uh, medicinal plants also, other toxicological plants which cause artificial bruises. But yes, uh, Calotropis, Semicarpus anacardium, they are known to cause false bruises. Differentiating from lividity from bruise, that is post-mortem lividity from bruise, it needs to be done. True bruise and artificial bruise, like I told you, the cause is trauma in true bruise, but obviously it can be juice of marking nut and calotropis. Location can be anywhere on the body depending on the injury. It is on the only accessible body areas, we need to remember that. The color will be according to the progression chart or the time since injury. This will be generally dark brown and it will not change with time. Collection of extravasated blood, it is collection of acrid serum because of the rupture or the bursting of the capillaries underneath, that is why the bruise is happening. So, there will be extra visited blood as the collection. Vesicles, no, there will be no vesicles, but because it is a body reaction, it is the acrid serum is being present. So, yes, there will be vesicle formation in uh, artificial bruise. So, now let us take a two minute break and continue further.